Hello, Explorerholics! Hello, Explorerholics! Welcome back to my channel. I am fully aware it has been way too long since I posted a video. Um, so I'm going to start a new series and hopefully that will get the ball rolling. So it's going to be kind of sort of like a mukbang series, but like I don't want to say that because like mukbang has like a certain connotation or whatever. But like, so basically I'm just going to be cooking and eating, but also talking to you guys. So today, let's get started. I'm going to have a kind of weird dinner. <laughs> let me just, let me just get into it. Okay. okay, so today I'm going to be having some leftover potato wedges. I made these yesterday, um, and I will tell you guys the recipe and everything. It went fine, but it called the recipe said to put tin foil across your pan and then put the potatoes in the tin foil to cook it. And there's still some with tin foil on them, and it was like impossible to get them off. So I don't know that I would do that again. I don't know what the problem is with not doing that. I'm gonna have to do some research on that. But I'm just gonna heat these up. But I'm going to wait a little bit because the star of the show, the acorn squash, which I am currently obsessed with acorn squashes, it takes like an hour to cook pretty much. So we're going to get started on this first and then we're going to cook some radishes. So I guess this is like a vegetarian meal too if you want to like eat some of that. It's not vegan because these do have parmesan on them and I'm going to dip this in ranch. And this is gonna be covered in butter, so <laughs> there's, um, there's some lactose in here. Okay, so let me get started and start filling you in on my life. So we were in my kitchen the other day and my mom just called like some kind of squash a squish and it made me laugh so hard. So um, this is an acorn squish. I love that. I hope I'm in frame, I don't even know. We had fish and chips one night and I'm so obsessed with acorn squash that I was like, I can't even do this without acorn squash anymore. Like I'm obsessed. Cause it was like, I had eaten half of it the day before and um, the other half was still in the fridge. And so I didn't want to let it go to waste. And it was my last night at home. So we were joking that we were having fish and chips and squish. So it was really fun. My mom, my sister-in-law and I were like cooking in the kitchen together. It was really fun. So I don't know. If I've really mentioned this on my channel ever, I cooked a little bit in, when I lived in South Africa, but I really don't cook that much. And so this New Year's, I decided that like my resolution was going to be cooking more. So that's what I'm going to do and I'm really excited for it. So let's talk. I think the last video I uploaded, I was saying that I was going to upload more often and that was like 4th of July two years ago. Um. <laughs> Let's talk about that. So I came back from South Africa and it was, it was splendid. It was great to be back. I definitely had missed a lot of things about America. There's just something about going back to your home country that even if it frustrates you before you leave, when you come back, it's just like, you can like relax and like let your guard down, I guess, if that makes sense. Like you don't have to constantly be like, am I gonna offend somebody by saying this? Just cause cultural differences, like am I driving on the right side of the road if you're in South Africa? Just like stuff that you can finally let your, your guard down and like take a deep breath and relax for a bit. And so uh, I got a little too comfy also like pro tip um so you cut it in half and you start scooping it out but if there's some reason that like it's being very difficult to get all the insides out then you can just use an ice cream scoop but in my apartment in college i don't have an ice cream scoop so sorry so i'm gonna preheat the oven to 400 degrees fahrenheit when I'm at home, I do about 350, 375, but this oven really struggles with actually cooking these guys. So it's gonna be a little bit different. Ooh, that was beautiful. Y'all couldn't see it, but this whole, I just did one scoop. This whole thing came out just in one, one little piece. It was really nice. So anyway, I came back from South Africa and I got really lazy and really, like I went through like culture shock of coming home, if that makes sense. It's, it's a thing and it was just exhausting and like really, I was trying my best to like feel like I had any purpose in this country, which sounds dumb, but like it's a thing. Because I'd had this whole thing that I was supposed to be doing in South Africa, I had a job, I had a purpose over there and then I came back and I was like I don't know what I'm doing here I'm just going to college oh by the way I'm at 
University of Alabama now. And I love it. I, I, <laughs> I wasn't really like living very healthily when I first got back. I was very triggered by a lot of things. Um, the group that I went with used to make fun of me for everything I ate and how much I ate, even if I was like really hungry. It was just embarrassing. So I wouldn't eat around a lot of people for a long time. And like, I thought about every single thing I ate and hated myself for, and it was a whole thing. So, um, that's over with now. Finally, kind of, sometimes. Now I'm back to being okay with it. Now I'm gonna eat in front of people on the internet. It's probably a mistake. But I'm really excited about this whole cooking thing because like in South Africa, I did cook a little bit and I helped in the kitchen some when um, they were cooking, the family that we were staying with, and just learned a lot. I want to be better at cooking by the time I graduate which this is my last semester, guys. It's been six years <laughs> in college. So like, well, technically that year with South Africa, I wasn't in college, but like since I started college. So um, it's time for me to get out. And I'm excited. Ukarfu. Fo? I don't know. I'm learning Portuguese, trying to, and it's not going super great, but also I'm loving it. So I've learned fork and knife, and I just learned spoon like 20 minutes ago, but I haven't like learned it yet, so I can't, I can't tell you what it is, I'm sorry. The first, so I'm using an app, this isn't sponsored, it's called Drops, it's by the same people who make Kahoot, I think. It's really easy and fun, and like there are pictures. <laughs> I'm liking it, but it is a little bit fast for me, like I don't feel like I'm really learning the words yet, but. That's fine. And so I'm trying to, since it's a food thing, while I'm in the kitchen, I'm trying to like implement that into the kitchen and like learn the words. So basically, you're going to take your fork and stab some holes all the way around. And now you have half scooped out with fork holes. Got it? Got it. So I don't know how many of you um, shop at Aldi, but I do, I love it. But one day I went to go to Aldi and buy some butter before Christmas break. I think I used up the rest of my roommate's butter. And so I was like, I'll just buy more for like both of us. It'll be great. So they only have one size container. It was literally this big. It's huge. And then I forgot about it, came back from Christmas break. It's still good. It's fine. And bought another thing of butter. So now I have butter for the rest of my life. So what you're going to do is get another knife. Afaka and go ahead and put some butter on it um, because that's always a good decision. We stamp butter. And this one has, um, it's light butter made with canola oil, which I don't think canola oil is that much better for you, but I don't care. I want butter on my delicious acorn squish. So yeah, if you were to ask me right now what my favorite food is, it's a tie between radishes and acorn squash and then probably cottage cheese, which is like the weirdest foods in the world. I fully understand that, but I'm really like loving these foods right now. You know, it took a long time because I hated like all foods. It was a problem. I would like literally only eat Subway because like, I don't know, that was something I could eat that I didn't want to throw up immediately after. So the fact that I found foods that I like is exciting. And yes, they're very strange foods, but you know, as long as I can eat them and cook them, we're good. I tried other squash. Um, so I just tried acorn squash over Christmas break when I was home with my family. So that's when I like figured out that I liked it. I'm very excited that I tried it and had an open mind and wasn't like, you know, squash, because like, I don't like butternut squash. I wish I did, I'm trying to. Maybe I'll find a way that I do like it. I haven't had spaghetti squash since high school and um, my taste buds have changed since then because of the, my nervous system disorder. So I might like it now, but I hated it then. So we'll see what happens with that. We're gonna take some salt and just put it on top. And I have low blood pressure because of my nervous system disorder. I don't know, have I really talked about it on here? And so a lot of salt is good for me. So if you're staring at here at this and being like, the American Heart Association must hate you, um, that's fine because so do most doctors because they're like, what's wrong with you? We can't figure it out. <laughs> so we're gonna take, I'm gonna take a pie plate. When I'm at home, I use one of those like 9 by 13 or smaller, I don't know pans but i'm gonna do a glass one because i've tried cooking it in metal and it just doesn't work the same it like wouldn't cook i feel like it's my oven but you're just gonna fill it up with a little bit of water and then you're going to take each little 
half that is now buttered and salted and put it inside and arrange it nicely, which I'm going to do over here where there's counter space. And look, our oven is preheated right on time. Beautiful. Ta-da! And now we wait. Set a timer for 45 minutes. And I'll check it before then. I always get like panicky while waiting for like the timer or, not, or an alarm to go off. I'll check it before then anyway, but just to make sure. And then let me show you something else. Remember how I told you I really liked acorn squash? Yeah, I bought like three the last time I went. This is an acorn squash also. And I've been looking for like how to tell if they're ripe before you cut into them. And it's really difficult. So I'm just gonna tell you some little facts that I found. If it's like orange, that's where it was growing on the ground. And I guess it goes yellow to orange. So if it's yellow, it's not as ripe. So this one's probably not gonna be that great. The other one had a lot of orange on it. So hopefully that means that it's gonna be really good. We'll find out. Yeah, let's get started on the and there's still leaves stuck to them. Good. So I literally was eating so many radishes that I had to keep going back to the store to keep buying more bags. And so I found out that all these sells bigger bags than Target does. So I bought them, but they're also bigger radishes. So I'm nervous that it's like a different type of radish and I'm not gonna like it. But you know, we're gonna try. It's gonna be fun. So for this, you want a paring knife hair in the air you're supposed to be able to be able to like cut it like this but that scares me so <laughs> hair in the air scares me so we're gonna set it on the cutting board and just feel safer because that's what's really important safety in the kitchen yeah i was literally eating like two bags of radishes a week minimum so i went and bought a bigger bag and that's exciting and i'm just cutting them into little things and then i like to like prep more than i'm gonna eat because then i can grab them when I'm hungry later, pull them out of the refrigerator and just kind of like munch on them later as like a little snack. I dip them in ranch and then um, they kind of taste like just like little ranch flavored chips. And then I feel like, like I'm having a little snack when I'm watching TV, except it's radishes. So still a snack, but a healthier snack than the chips that I use to eat. So love that. Okay, this knife is not great and it's really not cutting these well, but you know, that's okay. I usually use a different one, but it's in the dishwasher. Okay, we tried. And I'm fully aware that y'all cannot see what I'm doing, but I really couldn't find anything, like any other way to set up the camera. It's been a while since I've done a YouTube video. I've actually filmed actually several, but <laughs> if you follow my Instagram, you know why I haven't posted in a while. I really hate editing a lot. I think I said in my Instagram post that I'd rather like rip my toenails out than edit. It is annoying because, well, mostly because of my computer and my phone. I'm trying to figure out, like, everything's full on storage and so I have an external hard drive, but, like, they don't like talking to each other. And I'm like, <sighs> it's so much work. I don't know what you'll watch on YouTube, but I like this YouTuber. He's, like, a drama YouTuber named Deaf Noodles um, is the channel name. His name is Dennis Fitoso. I like his channel and he talks about like Nikocado avocado a lot and I was kind of like I don't want to do something like that but then like I was thinking about it last night I was like oh it'd be fun to do like a little cooking show except I don't know anything about cooking it's just kind of like a watch me learn how to cook and before your eyes kind of thing and so um I was like oh no that'd be really fun I started thinking about that and I was like oh well then I could like if it's a quick meal eat it and chat with them and like review the meal I got cookbooks for Christmas so I will be cooking from those as well actually I'll tell you the recipe was from a book the recipe for the potato things behind me um was from a book and I did that last night and it was really good and I can tell you about it but yes so I was cooking last night and I was like this would be fun to like just like cook my way through the cookbooks that I have and do these recipes and put my own spin on them because I did put my own spin on one last night and all of them that I've cooked so far <laughs> just like being able to do that and like share it with people and I think other people would be interested in like how can you cook when you don't have too much money because you're a college student what things are good as leftovers what things aren't you know that kind of thing i like to watch that kind of stuff on youtube so i thought that i could share it with everybody i'm sorry i'm sure my headroom is like off the camera and i'm sure that like my um eye contact is horrendous and i'm sorry i haven't done this in a while and it's kind of i'm kind of nervous it's been a minute 
So what's been going on in my life recently, you ask? Okay, I'll tell you. So when I was touring here, it was literally the day after I got back from South Africa, I like had to show up and do orientation here. I was so tired. I had these two friends, one of them, she's fantastic and I miss her so much. I mean, she's still here. We just like don't have the same schedule. So it's really hard to, to keep in touch and like keep up with each other. But we're supposed to get coffee this week. Charlie, you hear me? Coffee. And she was great. She like made sure that I didn't like fall asleep while walking around campus and stuff like that. Just slowly like disappear from the group because I'm like sound asleep on the quad or something. <laughs> I don't think we were in the same class the first semester anywhere. We were the second semester, I think. Like when I took each class is getting really blurry. I don't know. We were in the same math class and it was great. You know what? I think that was right before Christmas. So it must have been the first semester. Right? I think so. I'm sorry. This isn't important to you. And then I had this other friend who I met at orientation and we ended up taking a class together because you set up your schedule at orientation. And so I was like, oh, you have to take this class. Let's take it together. And it was great. And the first semester, I'm going to wash my hands. Because not those radishes all over it. The first semester, this is going to be really hard. I'm sorry, guys. She like texted me out of the blue and was like, hey, we're not friends anymore. And it was really sucky because I'm like, what did I do wrong? Like, I had a lot of um, drama leading up to this. I'm going to choose Tupperware for putting my radishes in. This one's great. It's from um, Tone It Up Meal Prep from Target. I found it in like the workout section and um, you can like pop this out to let air in or pop it down to keep it airtight and you just, it's a collapsible one. So, but anyway, but we were still like in class together. So it's kind of like, why would you do this? Like we have to sit next to each other in class. I don't know what you're doing. And I was kind of like, like, I'm not going to let you just decide that our friendship is over for us. Hello? Just tell me like what you don't like about it and we can work on it. Communication, you know? That's kind of what I told her. And we had this meeting, like talked about it on the quad for like almost an hour. And then she decided like, okay, I just need like space, you know? Cause like we were hanging out together like doing everything together. And I was like, that's fine. I understand that. So that's what happened. And then eventually we worked our way back to doing everything together all over again. And her, I don't want to get into her family drama, but something really traumatic happened over the COVID break. I don't know what that was. Was it over, were we in school? I don't remember. It might have been over the summer. It was really hard for her and none of her friends were around to talk to her or anything. Like they just were like, oh, bummer, bye. There was, a, there was a death in her family. And so I was there for her though. And like, I'm not trying to be like, oh, I was there for her, I'm the best friend ever. Like, no, it literally takes nothing to be there for someone when they need it. Like, I don't know what their problem was. So then after all of that, we're hanging out again this last semester. Like we were in the same class. It was really great. We did so much together. She helped me with my homework because she knows how to um, use Excel. And now I do too, but it was really great having a friend in class and stuff like that. And then this semester we were hanging out again and she literally, it was one day she was like, we had started like working out together. So she's like, hey, we should go for a walk tomorrow in the park. And I was like, yeah, sounds great. And then she takes me a picture of the salad and I was like, oh my gosh, it's beautiful. Great, so proud. That's a great salad. Like, wow. I texted her the next morning, like, hey, whenever you wanna hang out is great. Um, and she texted me that she doesn't wanna be my friend anymore. And she said that she blocked me on all social media and I blocked my number and like basically didn't give me a chance to say anything, which I'm rude. Like it was just really painful because she was like my best friend, but uh, jokes on her because I got a new friend and she's amazing. Well, not even a new friend, like we were already friends, but like now I have time to hang out with her because I'm not hanging out with this other toxic person. So anywho. I appreciate the time that we were friends and like I'm praying for her because I know she's going through a lot and I'm sure that's why she's pushing people away but like and she's like I don't want like deeper friendships I just want surface level friends and I'm like good for you so that's what I'm going through um I have these cute little tup or er, not tupperware um ramekins that I got at Target they have little lids but I don't think I'll need the lid they're from room essentials and they are one cup so I guess like eight ounces if you need to like measure something out. So that's cool. And that's what I'm gonna put my radishes in for tonight. Actually, I will use the lid because I can put ranch on the lid and then just dip it in there. There we go. Cause I don't have any like small containers for just like dipping sauce things. So um, I'm always struggling with that. We'll put both of these in the fridge until we're ready for them. Let's check the timer. That was a weird glitch. It said it had 56 seconds and I was like, oh, perfect. And now it says it's 27 minutes. So cool. So I'm gonna clean up and rehydrate because I've been talking a lot and I will get back to you when the potatoes are gonna go in the microwave or oven, I haven't decided. So, oops. 
So it had been over an hour and it wasn't even like cooked all the way through. So I switched it to broil, which is a hotter temperature and cooks from the top. And not even like five minutes later, it's like burned. Hold on, let me show you. I can't really tip it because there is water in there, but like, I tried. I'll still eat it, it'll be fine. The inside will be fine. It's just the top that's a little bit <laughs> too brown. When you try your best, but you don't succeed. Oops. So now I'm gonna work on heating these up. You know what? I'm gonna try these without the tin foil today and see if this goes any better. And I'm just gonna pop it in the oven. That I think broiling's around 500 degrees, so it's about 500 degrees right now. So I just turned it off. I'm just gonna leave them there for a minute and let that cool down while I tell you about the recipe. Um, this is the book that I got for Christmas. I got a couple books, but this is my like favorite one. It is the Easy Gluten-Free Cookbook. I call it, this is my Bleasy Cookbook. <laughs> If you didn't know, I'm gluten intolerant, so how to do gluten-free, and this is really, really helpful. And the index in the back has, there's a couple indexes, but this one's the label index. And so you can have like one pan recipes, five ingredients, sheet pan, one pot, 30 minutes, like that kind of thing. So that you, if you're like, oh man, I just have 30 minutes to cook and like really quickly eat or something like that, then you can do one of those recipes. Or if you're like, oh man, all my dishes are dirty, I just have this one pan, then you could do one of those recipes or whatever. It's got some really Helpful things. This is like measurements and conversions and stuff like that. You can see that I like tabbed the uh, recipes that I want to try. So this is by Lindsay Garza. Garza? I'm guessing Garza. If I can find it, I'll link it below. This is literally one of my favorites for sure. And I've already cooked a couple of recipes from here, but like I said, I always change them. So the Parmesan roasted potato wedges that I cooked yesterday that are now in the oven, we were on page 40 and it calls for red potatoes, olive oil, salt, and Parmesan cheese. And I added basil. I'm not really a measurer. So I just kind of did whatever I felt like. I did measure the olive oil, but like I said, I need more salt than the normal human being in the world. The normal human, the, the one normal human being, I need more salt than them. And so I also uh, measured the Parmesan, but then I was like, mm, I want more, so I did. And then, um, yeah, I just sprinkled basil on top. You can't even really taste the difference with the basil, honestly, I could have done more, but I didn't. It was more for aesthetic purposes because it's just dried basil from my cabinet. I don't know. I don't know if I grew up eating so much basil that now I'm like a into it but like I don't really taste not fresh basil anymore like I add it to everything so I just like can't taste it anymore I don't know but I always do add it because it always looks nicer it always looks like I had more ingredients and stuff so I guess we'll start making a point put this in the dishwasher took me forever to realize that if you kind of clean up as you go but at the end it's a lot easier I know that's like a really basic thing for you to think but like I didn't help in the kitchen growing up I should have I should have but I didn't because I'm spoiled I'm trying to get over it I usually do a small plate because like um there's a whole psychology behind why you should use smaller plates and like different colored plates this is what came with the apartment so I didn't choose the color but I always usually take a small plate and then um unless I have like a bunch of different types of food and it's like I don't want my food to touch I mean it's not that big of a deal but anyway sometimes I want a big plate but most of the time it's a small plate but with this I sometimes do a bowl if I feel like eating in my room because as you kind of like dig into it with a fork, it kind of like slides because it's been sitting in water. So, okay, we're good. Onto the plate, look at that. Gorgeous. And then I usually, I heard that if you put hot stuff in Tupperware right away and put it in the fridge, that it breeds bacteria. I have not researched those claims. Anyway, I usually just let it cool before I put it in the Tupperware because I know also air pressure changes. So like if you seal the Tupperware and it's hot, it can like, I think it expands and it might break your Tupperware or does it contract? I don't know. I don't know, I've just had issues, so that's what I think. I love on the back of this book, cause like, I know I keep talking about this book, but this one's my favorite. It says, no muss, no fuss, no gluten, no problem. <laughs> I love that, like, thank you. So let me get everything set up at the table and we'll keep talking. Okay, so we got some harsh lighting here. Isn't this great? We grab a fork. So I've got my food and I've got some milk because I wanted some milk. I don't drink soda, but I didn't feel like water. So anyway, this uh, potatoes recipe is really pretty easy. I think putting them in the oven to reheat them was a good idea rather than the microwave. So let's try this part. Mm -hmm. Anyway, let's hold on that. Let's try. 
try the new radishes, the big ones. Okay, so I'm gonna try one plain first. Okay, good. They taste the same. Haha, <laughs> I was nervous. Are there multiple kinds of radishes? I don't even know. I'm about to try this, but let me ask you to please give this a thumbs up if you like it. Give it a thumbs down if you don't like it, because I really do want to know what people are thinking. And comment below if you have any recipes that you want to try. I can um, do... I bake a lot too, so if you want that, let me know. But like, I can do... Oh, this is a normal recipe. Try making it gluten-free. I'm probably gonna like tweak some of them, because um, first of all, that's just who I am as a person. I have to put my own personal spin on everything. But I also just don't want certain ingredients. Um, I don't like certain foods, so. But if you want me to try something, if you're like, okay, listen, I don't like butternut squash, but I like this kind, like, I like it cooked this way, like, let me know. I'll try it, for sure. Comment below your favorite cooking channels if you have some. I know B Car Beatrice Caruso, I think is her channel. She's not like a cooking channel, but I really enjoy her like talking about food and like talking about like the things that she's discovering as she's going along. Love that. Let me try this. And then I will send you on your way to be happy little people on YouTube. I'm so quirky because I like butter. Ooh, this is good. Okay. I was really worried with how um, done it appears to be, but I really like it. Okay. Mm. Okay. Funny story, I actually have been telling all my friends how much I love acorn squash and I went to Aldi and they were entirely sold out of acorn squashes, which they had earlier squash, squashes, squash eye, squishes, squishes. They were entirely sold out at Aldi and I was like, that's kind of funny because they just had them the other day. And then I went to Target and they were entirely sold out and I was like, well, it's a good thing I bought three last time I went because like I've been having it almost every single day. I'm very excited that this one turned out okay because it's been a while. I think next time I'm going to try just broiling it the whole time and see if that helps at all because recently it's been where the top is still not cooked and broiling means cooking from the top and at home it only takes like 45 minutes max and here it's taking well over an hour so i don't know it's the same oven temperature so i don't know why it's being like this but you know anyway thank you for watching again let me know how you feel about this series and give me any recipes if you do like it that you want me to try i can talk about personal stories i had a wild bit school experience so many people got arrested anyway so i can talk about those and i can talk about like other stuff so just let me know because i used to do story times but i feel like this is more fun for me so let me know how you feel okay thanks have a great day love you bye